Mission 11, Stella. Is this her TV show? Oh no! No, 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 no. Oh no, another F! And she can read, read the whole thing. No, but... No, she's paying close attention, and there's just so many Fs. Just Fs everywhere. I don't know if Study's gonna do it. Be like, it's time for plans B, C, D, any any of those. There are other ways to receive Stellas, though. I, I sympathize. I relate, Anya. I'm sorry. They have to do this. Is it? <laughs> I mean... There you go. This is the way to do it, actually. This is a great idea. Connect to something that already has meaning to her. All of Lloyd's dedicated research into this series is paying off. Yeah, yeah, I get it, Anya. I think if you put together all the clips of me talking about how terrible school is, it would it would probably be something like a thousand hours at this point. I don't have a chip on my shoulder or anything. But therein lies the problem and the solution. The process for learning that's most meaningful to me, and I would guess to most people as well, is that there's a there's a thing that I want. I've identified something of value or need for myself, and I'm not there yet, and so I have to bridge the gap. That creates a, a sort of vacuum between two points that has kinetic energy, so that the process of figuring out how to close that distance is sort of natural. School works in reverse, where you're sort of thrown into the middle, into the process, with no end points. It's sort of like, so what? There's nothing to connect it to. I had this thought about learning writing in school. Writing, in my opinion, or more generally the act of self-expression, is really critical. In the event that you find yourself in a situation where there's something of real significance, like you can identify something of value, to the point where it's just stirring you up inside and you need to get it out, or perhaps the expression of that thought is a vital importance. You are then hopefully able to sit down and start to think in a process-oriented manner. This is what I need to get across to people. This is the, the significance of what I have to say. How do I best express this? And that energy will likely push you to communicate that idea in one way or the other. With varying levels of success based on, I guess, practice and innate ability and stuff like that. But nevertheless, success can be measured a lot differently. And you have a personal connection to it and stake, so you're going to be able to see it much more richly. But what is school writing? School writing is, here's this thing you have to write about for reasons. You know, like, why? Why am I writing about this? I have no connection to it. And it's so obvious to say out loud, and maybe it's even idealistic to say that this should be a focus. You don't really have time, perhaps, to get everyone in the right headspace to learn every subject, you know? I mean, every subject we learn is probably of vital importance somehow. Maybe it actually is just more time effective to just go through the process and hope that the right people will connect the dots that they need. Nevertheless, I think for certain kinds of people, as students, that's exactly what's missing. It's the why. It's not the capability. I mean, I'm just smart. On that note, I think another way students suffer, perhaps especially bright students, is if you're adept at school, you you realize there's a lot of other ways you can kind of game the system to get high grades without learning. I'll say that in language study, you know, I've used apps like Memrise and Anki for word repetition. What I found is that the learning often doesn't translate outside of the app because my brain, I guess, is taking cues from the app itself and knows what to expect. It's really tough. You have to have the right task and a lot of times the right task needs to be accompanied by the right motivation. But yeah, Anya is gaming the system in a way. She just happens to be a psychic. Right. It would erase suspicion. Start with C's? C's are believable. That's the best form of cheating. Storing the information in your brain. Nobody will ever know. He's learning as a father. <laughs> This is such a more nuanced take than it was in the beginning. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Now we're thinking like a like a real father, like a real strategist as well. It's mommy. That time we had that stampede that was never explained. <laughs> Come to think of it. <laughs> Just moving on. Moving on from art. There's also, uh, what else we got? Acting? Sports, of course. Hit one of them, please. <laughs> the sports is pretty wide in and of itself. I mean, she could be bad at every sport, but be great at one, you know what I mean? Patience. Patience and, and positive regard. I love. Right, right. Maybe fiction. She loves the TV show. Reading, writing. Honestly, better than me. Ooh. Isn't she a little bit young for this, though? <laughs> Apprehending criminals. Honestly, I feel like grades are probably easier than all that. I like how this is just is actually shifting into being just good for Anya. 
Here we are, just helping. Oh no, even this? Oh no, oh no. Right? I, is this- am I crazy? It's like screaming in the face? Screaming you- screaming at you in the face? She's telling you what she's interested in and what she's good at as well. I'm not exactly sure what that connects to Stella Lies, but it's something to start with. And you never know. I mean, all the time I spent in life finding other pursuits that had nothing to do with my actual interest in life, which is just ideas and media and games and movies and TV and trying to abstract concepts out of art. And where did that all lead me? You know, it led right back there anyway. It was all such fruitless struggle when had I been a little more observant or open to the idea or maybe more courageous, it could have happened a lot sooner. Not that I have any regrets. I mean, I value all the experiences I've had, even or <laughs> maybe even especially some of the negative ones. What can we do with her love for manga and TV? One, you could do what I think they were hinting at doing in the beginning, where he tried to connect all the subjects to the heroes that she likes. I actually feel like that's something that would work for me. You know, if there's a character you adore and you're aware that the character is good at something, it brings that thing to life in a new way. There's a sort of muscle memory for emotion as well. I can't think of a specific example but I definitely know I've had times in my life where I'm doing something really cool but the reason it's cool for me is not the activity itself it's because I've done it in a game before is that crazy to say out loud these are not the greatest examples but they're what come to mind I remember that playing The Sims 2 actually made me want to get a job when I was young and I remember when I spent a week in a beach town in Spain it made me feel like I was in the the Costa del Sol segment of Final Fantasy 7 I know it's stupid but whatever it's extra utility it's extra emotion and excitement about life you know so I'll take it and I think it can be used deliberately to that effect or more specifically something involving literature I feel like it's not too great of a leap. Yeah, I mean, to her credit, she's, what, four or five? <laughs> oh no. Better not tell anyone about this, because we get uh, spor sporks or whatever they're called. She didn't want to go to the pool. Oh no. Oh no. Anya? How far can you hear? Ah! Well, here's a life-saving opportunity. She's got some range on her. Maybe it has to do with the, the intensity of the emotion. But can she help? I mean, get Lloyd. Get Lloyd in there. There you go, there you go. No, just follow her. Trust her, trust her. There you go. Good communication. Oh, right. But there's no time to hide it. Go, go, go. This is something you'll regret for the rest of your life if you don't make the most of this moment. There you go, there you go. She did both. She made an excuse and did the right thing. <laughs> A lot of time has passed for Kenkun. Oh, the bubbles. There's no lifeguard on duty? What kind of negligence is this? <laughs> this dramatic. Oh my god! Tom Cruise over here. The heart, though. The heart. Her little lungs. <laughs> He's just in shock. For just so many reasons. I mean, he's also dying. Oh no! It's so terrifying and cute at the same time. Oh no! <laughs> there you go. Some The adults saw, though. The adults saw. Everything's gonna be fine. There you go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> that was bizarre in the sense that it was simultaneously terrifying and adorable. And for all that, you know, we, we get a Stella. One Stella. Not that that's what matters here. She also sort of misses the chance for the Stella by doing this. I mean, that wasn't her goal. By pretending it was an accident. <laughs> Why does he know that? That's an odd fact. I can't also feel like maybe there's foreshadowing in this somewhat, you know? Anya's in a little bit too deep in what she has in her shoulders, and she, she'll throw herself in into a dangerous level. If left unchecked, maybe. I don't know. Did you get one? She did. Hell yeah. It's truly an amazing event when you think about it. Like, this is way more than Estella. This is something she'll never forget for the rest of her life. Yeah, like, she legit is responsible for someone's survival. This is the route, right? Like, it's, I don't know. Thinking about Anya and her, who she is and her well-being, it's... It's gonna be her character and connection to other people. Seeking sort of that excitement. It's not gonna be academics. Unless you can find a way to connect the two things. But, you know, now I'm getting the growing sense that there's a danger to that as well. Because it's a really great thing to discover and it's such a good instinct, but it's gotta happen in due course. You know, it's really easy to imagine her being in way over her head. I mean, she is in way over her head already. And you get a feast? Man, the winds just keep coming. <laughs> I was gonna say though, maybe that, that's not it. Everyone's respect plus a hundred, hell yeah. That would be suspicious if it happened too often. She's just saving people left and right. Didn't take a lot more than candy. They wear their Stellas every day? <laughs> that confidence, though. That Stella confidence. 
Uh oh. Oh no, here we go. Not Becky though. Not to Becky. Don't forget to worship your academic superiors on your way in. Instantly, her mind goes to Damien. Oh, of course, because of the mission. I'm so in invested in Aina's life, I just forget. I forget what the actual premise is of the story. World peace. Also an end to global warming. Oh no, is she really, really doing this to Becky, huh? This didn't go exactly the way that she thought. Oh no, it's not required? Oof. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit much. Yeah. Instant humbling. And that's not wrong, but it also hurts. This is bringing up all sorts of painful feelings that I didn't want. No upset. For this also, I can't really remember the specifics, but I know for a fact there were a lot of instances as a kid where, like, I was unduly proud of something, and I had a humbling coming. But I was just a kid, you know? I don't know. The kids don't know the world. If it were an adult who was showing off like this, it would be kind of obnoxious. But for Anya, it's it's cute. In a way, it's, it's like role-playing. She's finding out what value is, and at heart, it's just a desire that all kids have, I guess all people have, to be liked and just trying to find the right way to that. So it hurts to see the opposite reaction. There's sort of a brutality to growing up in that way that is simultaneously necessary and also kind of sad, if that makes sense. You know, there's a important, I would argue, destruction of a certain kind of innocence. It's complicated. This is a way of sort of sticking up for her, but not in a very direct way. Becky's being really nice doing the Starlight Anya thing. Think bigger. <laughs> the whole tiara, huh? That's all, just a, you know, a house, a tank. On the outside. Yeah, this too I think can actually work really well, but I think the reward has to be generated from the kid, because they really have to want it. As I think a bunch of you probably know by now, I was a child actor, and I remember there was a time where I, I really wanted a PlayStation. Like, I was not allowed to play video games at all in my house, so I could only play video games at friends' houses, and I was so riveted by games like Resident Evil and RPGs that my friends were playing, and I just had to have one. And so my dad made getting one conditional on getting the part on my very next audition. And you better believe I got that part. There was no other way to get that PlayStation. And I so desperately wanted one. It was the hardest I ever prepared for an audition, I think. It was for Shakespeare in the Park, I believe. I ended up getting fired from that role anyway, but already had the PlayStation. So actually it was the, the best possible outcome because I suddenly had all this free time to play games. That was one hell of a summer. Weasel, is that your dog? Puppy. Oh, oh, oh! Are we going to get a pet? Is that where this is going? Yes, we're missing the pet. Of course. Your dad too, for reasons. <laughs> right, this is how it's gonna work out. It's all gonna go down this way. And world peace. And solving global warming. <laughs> you weren't supposed to see that, Damien. Why does it okay? A spy dog. Yes. She gets a reward already? So they're getting a dog for sure? This is so great. This is all happening so quickly. I thought there were all these annoying tasks in her way, like math and English. This is the one. This is the dog. It's not a pet shop. It's gonna have a story. It's gotta have an interesting story to fit into this crew. Serious iron vibes here. What kind of dog are they going to end up with? I'm so curious. This is him, isn't it? Does the dog too have like psychic visions of the future? Oh, look at him! Oh, he's like a, a big polar bear. I love him already. No, no. Sometimes the right pet finds you. 
the first dog I ever had was a chow mixed with something else. And I come from a, a family of cat people. So the dog was not on our radar at all. But my mom used to go running in a park in the Bronx and the dog just started following her around. And so she like led it to the police station that was in the park. And they told her that they'd been trying to catch the dog for a solid week and hadn't been able to. And it just happened to approach her and they wouldn't take it in. So she just took it home temporarily. And you'll know how that, that goes. And he was just the best, sweetest dog ever. Like in a way that set me up for disappointment for future dogs. He was just so great with people and cats and intelligent. He was the best. I really miss him. Weirdly, it turned out that his previous owner lived like five houses down from us and had just one day decided to move and abandon him. And we could not understand how they possibly could have abandoned an animal like that. But at the same time, we were kind of grateful that they did because we ended up with him. I feel like some people just don't understand what it takes necessarily, or they have expectations that aren't realistic about animals, animal care. And I didn't expect this from this episode, but I'm suddenly super excited to get the dog joining the, the group, joining the family. I don't know why it just feels so right. Yeah, you know, we got the wife, that's cool. But have you gotten yourself a dog?